Hiya folks, the uh, brake warning light has come on the dashboard of this Vauxhall Vectra C. The front pads obviously need changing, and while I'm at it, I thought I might as well change the discs as well. They've got a bit of a lip on them, so let me get the car jacked up, let's get the wheel off, and let's start this little job. See you in a minute. Okay, then I'm just gonna jack the car up, put you on time lapse for that, get the wheel off, and let's have a closer look at it. Right, okay, here we are. We've got a, on the back, you probably can't see it, but there's quite a big lip on the back of the actual disc, so I'm glad I've changed these. I did rub my hands around them first of all to feel, and also on the front as well, there's quite a big lip there as well. The pads, as you can probably see there, are quite low, so uh, they definitely needed doing. Right, let's have a look around the back, see what we got. We've got the two here, which live under these little plastic caps there. If I'll just pull one of them out. That's where the pins uh, slide in and out so that the caliper freely moves. So I'm gonna remove them top, and bottom as well. And hopefully we'll be able to lever this caliper off. And we've also got these big bolts there which actually hold the, the carrier to the actual suspension mount. We'll undo these two first, get the caliper out of the way and then we'll undo the actual bracket that holds the caliper on. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, well I thought I'd show you this one. It's normally they've got the wide clips here, but this caliper for some reason hasn't got them. So, and as you can see, they're held in. That goes over the top there like that. But these have got a little L bracket on them, as you can see there, look. And I tried levering them off from this way and it didn't want to know, because that little bracket obviously holds them in. So I managed to lever it off this way so that I was tipping the bracket outwards. And I then got a pair of grips on this bit and pulled at the same time. And that actually freed it now, as you can probably see there and I'm able to withdraw it. And also underneath there, there's some sort of shim, shimmy pad here. Here's how difficult they are, look. See, how difficult that is to come out. Let me put you back on the tripod. So I've not seen these clips before, and they are a bit tricky. So basically tip it forward with a screwdriver. And there's a little metal plate behind there as well, some sort of shim, shim plate as well, so. That's if you've got these type. There's that little plate, look, I don't know how they, uh, just to know that might be some sort of anti squeal plate, I would imagine. So very tricky to get out. Much more tricky than the old wire type. And that's it. So if you've got something like that on your calipers, on your Vectra or any type of Vauxhall, that's how you've got to lift them and then sort of push them back to get them little lugs out of the way. Very tricky little things. I've never seen them before. I've normally dealt with the wire ones. One other thing to note as well is that uh, these are the pins that the carriage actually moves on. As you can see, there's a build up of probably old grease there and maybe rust as well. So you've got to give these a good wire brushing down before you put these back in because that, that means that your brakes can actually freeze on or stop on, get stuck on on one side because the caliber's not moving. Right, okay, that's that. It should hopefully now, you might have to give a bit of leverage to this just to push the pistons back in. Because as I say, there is a lip on this and I'm just pushing the piston in gently now. I haven't removed the um, the master cylinder lid. I'm just uh, just pushing it back a little bit, and hopefully we should be able to get enough to get these off. There we go. Now, what you don't want to do here is to um, put any strain on your clip there. So what I'll do first of all, before we do that, I'm actually going to release this clip because that's only a very short bit of hose there. And you do that just by taking this clip off. Just give it a gentle tap. It should just pull back that clip. There we go, get that off, wiggle this cable out and then you've got the whole length of the flex then to just hang this caliper up. So again, handy to have a wire brush at hand just to clean all these things up. And also wear a mask as well for protection. We need to push that out from the back. There we go. See, that means now 
we've got a lot more slack here to hang this up without damaging our rubber hose rather than just relying on that little short bit. So I've just got this bit of uh, yellow cord here and all I'll do is hang it up on that. There we go. Well, I'll just rest it there for a the minute just so we can see the pads. So this pad is just sitting on the disc. As you can see, let's just get that out. Okay. As you can see, very, very low. So uh, we felt we'd done this in the right time. On this pad up here, you should find is actually pushed into the uh, piston. So you just ease that forward. Just to get it out. And what you have got here, on the back I forgot to mention, just turn it over. These ones have got a sensor cable in them, which goes right round there via the clip, through there. You may not be able to see this, but at the back here, there's a, a clip which you just open up and then pull the cable out. Again, there's a clip there. And I think you'll find there's a little lug either side that you need to open up. Here we go, just pulled it apart. Can only go back in one way because there's a little lug in the middle of it. So that's that. There we go, that comes out of that clip at the back. Out of that clip. Might find it handy if you've got a large pair of these grips here just to ease that piston a bit easier. There we go, that's going in now, look. Just so that we can pull that out the way. There's our sensor. And what you'll probably see is that our sensor there on the edge has been rubbing on the lip of the disc. So that's what's caused our indicator light to come on. So there we go, done it at the right time. Right, okay, let's try and undo these uh, carrier bolts. I don't want to notice it. These are normally very tight. So let's get that on there. The old breaker bar. Here we go. Very tight and dried in fridge. And then one's down there. There we go. You wouldn't do that with an impact gun. You need the breaker bar on that. Right, now I've done that, let's put the uh, impact gun on there now. Hopefully I'll do it with this. There we go. There we go. Right, okay, that's that. Withdraw our bolts there, Fred locks in as well, these bolts, that's why they're extra tight. So let's get them out. We'll clean all them threads up afterwards as well. And then there's our carrier off. There we go, there's that. That could all be cleaned up and wire brushed as well. I'll straighten the wheel up, take out the little centre screw and then the disc should pull off. Right, these are never really tight. You just gotta give them a bit of a jolt really, I suppose. Just a little shock and they'll come undone. There we go. And hopefully, we should be able to just drift this off. I've got a copper mallet there, just to... There we go, just start sticking them on. They always stick around this area, so I'll give that a clean up with a wire brush, get all this lot cleaned up, and then we'll put the new discs and pads back in. So there you go, quite a big lip on them front and back there, as you can probably see, so uh, yeah, good job we're changing them. Right, so here's the pad with the sensor in. Technically speaking, you probably don't have to take the sensor cable out, but if, like me, you've brought pat pattern pads and they haven't got the sensor on them, as you can see, they're the little notch for the provision of the sensor. All you can basically do is just to slip it out of the old one. I've got a screwdriver here. Just gently lever it up if you can. You don't want to damage it if you can help it. 
you might be able to hold it on the side, you don't want to damage it. There's a couple of clips on the side there, just hold them a couple of clips and maybe pull it out like that, there we go. So that's my sensor out. Now again, I'm just hoping that I uh, haven't damaged it. So I'm going to replace that in the new pad. And to do that, you might want to come in through the back. So you just have to lever that anti-squeal plate up a little bit. Right, okay, so that's back in there. So I'm just going to clean all these hubs up now, the brackets and all that, with a rotary wire brush. Do make sure you put your mask on. And also your safety goggles. Right, okay, that's why I brushed up the hub. I like to put a little bit of copper slip just around this edge here, because that's where it's going to bind and stick and rust. And it just helps in case you've got to take this off again to service it in the future. It just makes life a little bit easier, so you can do it if you want, that's what I do. Okay then, I've got these um, Apex discs. I've used them on my Signum and they're very good discs as far as I'm concerned, they do the job. And just measure them up against your old discs as well, just to make sure, because sometimes they do vary from model to model. I've had it myself. So these have got a oil residue all over them. So what you need to do is to clean them with a brake cleaner before you actually fit them. So give them a good clean because they will have an oily residue all over them as you can probably see there. Look. So one thing also to note is sometimes when you buy new discs they come painted grey and that grey again is a protective coating you haven't got to remove that. When you break, it tends to take the coating off. So if they are sprayed gray, that is also a protective coating as well. Right, okay, so there's our disc. Let's offer that up into place. Right, you've got a little hole there, as you probably know, for the locating dowel. So let's just put that into place. Spin it around so all your nuts line up. Let's put that in place. And then we can just nip this up and that will hold the disc in place. You haven't got to be very tight with this, it's just literally a locating screw just to hold the disc into place. I'm going to give them a wire brush out. Again, make sure you've got a mask on for this. You don't want to be breathing this dust in. And you also want to be checking around your piston dust seal as well, just to make sure it's in one piece and it's not perforated at all. And I'm also just going to give it a quick once over with some brake cleaner, like that. And you may, as I say, have to push that piston further back in. You can either do that with a, a G clamp or like with a grips like what I did. Right, that's okay, that's fully back in now. The pad with the sensor on goes in first, that's got a clip on it, that goes into your clip. And don't forget that your cable wants to go through where the piston comes out. So let's just stick that through there. And I may want to just undo our knot up there now. Because I want to pull that cable out of there like that. So that I can push me piston back in. There we go. I'm just going to sit that on the disc at the moment. Quick wire brush off of my bracket. Make sure you clean these little slots out there. That's it, get them nice and clean because that's what the pads run on, you see. But first of all, I will clean these two bolts up and apply some more thread lock to them. So I'm going to do that now. Right, so here you can see me two sliding pins. I've given them a good wire brush. Just the same with the bolts as well. Again, absolutely spotless now, makes them go in a lot easier. I'm just going to put some thread lock on now. I'm using the blue one, that was the one that was already on there. And I'm just going to give a little spin around just to get them evenly through all the threads. Right, so just slide the caliper holding bracket on and put the caliper retaining bolts back in. Now again, I'm just zipping them up with my battery impact driver. This isn't really 
powerful enough to tighten these up, so I'm using my breaker bar there, as you can see, just to give the final tightness. There we go. And I'm also putting a bit of copper slip on the little slider part of the bracket there, as you can see. You don't need to put copper slip on the back of discs like you used to years ago. And I'm just sliding them pads in now and I'm just about to fit the caliper now over the top. And it should slide on absolutely perfectly if you've pushed the piston right home. And again, the uh, little slider bolts there. Again, I'm just putting a little bit of white grease on them uh, before I insert them. The white grease has never been a problem with me. Oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna put them rubber bungs back in the back side of the calipers there, as you can see. They've been done up now. So there you go. All that's back on now. Caliper's nicely floating, as you can see. Although I've got to put the clip on the front there now. And I've also put the cable for the sensor all the way back up there again. So that's all back in. We've got that clip to go on the back there. And just gently tap that in with a hammer. There we go. That's that all back in. Put this clip in and when the job's done. There we go. Job done. Okay, folks, that's it, job done. I've now got to do exactly the same again to the other side. I won't film that because it just takes time. Anyway, hope you found this uh, useful. And don't forget, if you do like our channel, just hit the old subscribe button there and ring that little notification bell. And that means that you'll get notified every time we upload a video. Anyway, thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.